Good morning. Welcome to reInvent 2023. It's exciting. You feel the energy, you feel the, the passion for innovation. My name is Cameron Brooks. I'm the, uh, the leader for Amazon Web Services public sector for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And it's my honor to kick off this session, to kick off the day with a very exciting topic, generative AI. In a minute, I'll, I'll go through a little bit of the, uh, the, the background of what we have today. But I know that you're really excited about generative AI, one of the leading topics in the world today. So you're in this room because you know that large language models, or LLMs, are ushering in a new era of possibilities, from personalizing learning experiences to summarizing 200-page manuals. These powerful algorithms have cracked the code of natural language processing. The impacts are endless. In a world that is more connected than ever, these models facilitate communication across borders, fostering understanding and collaboration on a global scale. In the face of global challenges like climate change or public health crises, these models assist researchers in analyzing vast amounts of data, accelerating the pace of discovery and innovation. And how about education? Imagine a world where every student, regardless of their location or background, has access to a personalized learning experience that unlocks their full potential. By harnessing the power of language, LLMs are helping us confront some of these most pressing issues of our time. Lucky for us, we have the team that developed one of the most powerful LLMs here today. Falcon 180B is the top performing, personalized, pre-trained, open source model among 100 plus models listed on Hugging Face. Today we will dive into how the team built this, what makes Falcon unique, the AWS training environment, and practical, practical applications for you to get started. In a minute I will introduce, or I'll turn it over to Dr. Ebdizam al mazrui a trailblazer and a visionary leader whose remarkable journey has left an NLW mark on our industry and has inspired countless individuals to reach for new heights in their pursuits. Dr. Ebdizam is the executive director, acting chief AI researcher at the Technology Innovation Institute, or TII. TII is a leading global research center dedicated to pursuing the frontiers of, no <coughs> of knowledge. TII's team of scientists, researchers, and engineers work to deliver discovery, science, and transformative technologies. TII's work focuses on breakthroughs that will future-proof our society. Dr. Abdizam also co-founded the AI Cross Center Unit at the Technology Innovation Institute and leads the Big Data Subcommittee at the UA, of the UAE Council for AI and Blockchain. She was featured on the list of leading AI women of the world in 2023, and she was the first Emirati female to hold a PhD in artificial intelligence for wireless communication, engineering, and computer science. And my favorite anecdote about Dr. Ebdizam is that Ebdizam in Arabic means smile. So she was linked to Amazon from the very beginning with her name. So please congratulate me, so help me welcome Dr. Ebdizam to the stage. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Cameron, for the great introduction. You did a better uh, job than me introducing TII and the work that we are doing there in the United Arab Emirates. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us today to shed light on some of the most powerful open source LLM model in the world, Falcon 180B, which has been trained using Amazon SageMaker. In today's agenda, it's not only me, also it is AWS team who were with us through all the journey, working with us to train the most powerful open source LLM. Later, 
Will and also Ben will join me to introduce more large language model and how we train it using Amazon SageMaker. And also they will speak about the prompt engineering and function calling and the plugins using Falcon 180B. So from where I come, I am Dr. Ibtisam al -Mazru'i. I founded the AI Cross Center Unit in Technology Innovation Institute starting in January 2022 with a mission to build one of the best leading AI center in the world. It's not only my vision, it is the vision of Advanced Technology Research Council. Our mandate is to have Advanced Technology Research and Development Hub in United Arab Emirates. And what is the best story to do is we have to focus on what is the recent trend and the latest advanced technology and how we can shape our human resources our talents from around the world. In Technology Innovation Institute, the Applied Research Center in Advanced Technology Research Council, we have people from more than 70, 80 nationalities around the world. We are more than 1,000 employees. So we believe that with collective effort, with different people from around the world, we can contribute towards the advancement of the technology, not only in AI, but also across different disciplines and sectors, such as robotics, cryptography, directed energy, telecommunication, uh, cybersecurity, and many others. You can see here also we have the other subsidiaries under Advanced Technology Research Council. Venture One is the commercialization arm. So after a few days, or maybe this week, you will hear the spin out of the first AI company from United Arab Emirates, and it will be based on Falcon. In fact, tomorrow is the lunch. And then also we have Aspire, the program development. So what we do in Technology Innovation Institute, we don't only develop a technology for the sake or the purpose of publication and research. We want to solve challenges, real challenges in the world. So we listen to our customers, to their global challenges, and we address that by developing a technology up to technology readiness level four and plus. Then we take it to different customers to run different pilots, and then we can spin it out as a startup company, or we can sell it as a commercialization uh, under Venture 01. From where I come, we believe in advanced technology. It will have a significant impact on the sustainable development goal. We have more than, or we have 17 sustainable development goals that focus from poor education, healthcare. AI technology is a tool. And we believe by open science, open research, open LLM, open AI models, it should be equitable and everyone should have access to that knowledge and to that science and to that advanced model. Because once you have access to that model, you will be able to develop advanced technology that it will solve global challenges across different uh, sectors and also under the sustainable development goal. Collaboration, openness also is important to harness the technology while also we are safeguarding the human values and the safe consideration while we are developing and deploying these advanced technology models. Our achievement in generative AI, it doesn't only start with Falcon 180B, it started long time ago by also introducing the largest Arabic LLM model in the world in April 2022. Back then, ChatGPT was not there. So only the technical community, they were aware about NUR and the capabilities of NUR as a large language model with 10 billion parameters. Then we started and the work started by, we already have the roadmap and we already built the human resources. We have the right financial investment and we believe that we can contribute to the, towards the advancement in the technology. So we set the roadmap for Falcon LLM. It is an incremental work started with Falcon 180B, but before that, there was Falcon 40B. Falcon 40B has been trained with 1 trillion tokens with only uh, with a size of 40 billion parameters. 
Then, of course, we continue our journey by training Falcon with 180 billion parameters using 3.5 trillion tokens. And this is not only something that it comes out of nowhere, thanks for the open research in the AI, when we saw the Hoffman scaling law that introducing that to have a better model, no need for you to have larger model, but also you can scale in terms of the size or you can train your model longer. There it comes to the idea that, okay, let's train a model with a similar size of GBT3, but with more trillion tokens, and let's see how it will perform. And that's why Falcon 40B with half of the size of GBT3 model, it's already outperformed GBT3 performance on zero shot uh, accuracy. What is LLM? It's part of generative AI model and the main concept for this large language model, our foundational model, once you train this large language model using the whole public web data, you come and crawl the web data, you filter your data, you build the data pipeline, you already train it using different distributing architecture for different transformer. And the main purpose is once you developed this foundation model, you can have a lot of use cases that you can build different uh, use cases for uh, different customer and different business sectors. how LLM is different than the traditional machine learning algorithms. Yes, it is part of it, but in traditional machine learning algorithm, you have massive amount of data that requires labeling. And not only that, when you train traditional machine learning algorithm, you only solve a specific task. But using large language model, you have massive amount of data. They are not labeled. At the same time, once it, you finish the training, you have one of the best foundational model or general foundational model that it can solve multiple tasks from text generation to automation to summarization to chatbot and many other applications for across different spheres and sectors. Of course, building LLMs is not as an easy step. The journey starts. We have the vision, we have the mandate, and we need to collect our resources to come over the challenges. One of the main challenges that we face is you have to collect the data. The data, it is there, but you have to make sure that the data is clean. We remove the, any bias in a toxic data set. So we developed a thorough data pipeline infrastructure to remove any duplication or to filter any toxic or bias uh, uh, information in our training data set. Also, not only that, but you have to build your own data pipeline infrastructure to be able to use it to train large language model. The story doesn't end here. One of the major factor that always you have to consider while building LLMs is the compute. Power. So you have to have the infrastructure to, to train a massive computational load using your infrastructure. And here you have the choice. Either you will rely on HPC infrastructure or a new cloud infrastructure. For us, we chose AWS for many reasons. Later, we can discuss it. Also, we have to make sure that we are already using regular health check to maintain the integrity of our model and make sure that whatever we train, it's trained correctly. The orchestration also is important and essential factor here to make sure that whatever you have or you built is seamless integration through all the process while you are training one of the best models in the world. The data scale also and the type of that data scale. Do you have enough variety in your data? Do you have the right proportion for the data that you need to consider before training your LLM? Because the type of the data, and if you will be able to answer these questions, you can make or break your LLM. 
and also you have to have the strategic thinking because even if the mandate or the target is to build one of the best model in the world you have to build it incrementally so we started building falcon with 1 billion parameter then 3 billion parameter conducted different experimentation different architecture to train it using SageMaker. And then we learn from each stage what is the best recipe for training this model. Then also we have Falcon 7B and then we scale it to Falcon 40B. And once everything was set and we make sure that the performance is scaling with our recipe, we scale to Falcon 180 billion parameter trained using 40,000 GPUs in A100 in cloud infrastructure using AWS. One of the most important factor as well is the cost. Because there is a financial investment that you will put, that you will put here. This financial investment, the goal is, it will be expensive task for you, but here what you are trying to solve. Are you trying to build a model just for the sake of building it, or you are trying to build one of the best model, so that model will be utilized and accessible from different researchers, from different developers, and from different entrepreneurs around the world. And this is the main value and the main thing that you have to consider while you are putting any financial investment for training LLM models. And here I am introducing Falcon. And as I mentioned before, regardless of the machine learning application or the technology that it will start, either it is for business or organization or maybe a mission to solve any, any potential problem, we don't use machine learning just for the sake of using, but also we want to solve a problem. And the mandate is to build one of the powerful foundation model for research and commercialization. So how we did it, we built one of the top pioneer open source model file con 40 billion parameter, which is trained using 1 trillion tokens using 384 GPUs in Amazon. And also then we have file con 180 billion parameters, which is trained using 3.5 trillion tokens. And also it is trained up to 4,000 GPUs during the last month of the training. Here you can see that we have different Falcon series from 7B, 40B, 180 billion B parameters. All of them, we use decoder structure for our transformers. And also we consider high quality corpora that is assembled from different massive web data. We ensure that there is no duplication so we limit the memorization, especially with the small LLMs. And also, we train it with this massive training uh, number of tokens to make sure that we are receiving the right performance or the right mission that we are trying here to solve. Here is in the table, you can see here that it's, we in Falcon, we cover a wide range of the capabilities and also in terms of the inference requirements. It enabled uh, uh, different usage. So for example, Falcon 7B today, you can run it using your Apple M2 and the, the, the hardware devices. In Falcon 180B, it requires for you 8A100 to run that one as an inference. And you can see here that we reported a steady performance in terms of zero shots across uh, all the Falcon series. Falcon 7B and Falcon 40B is available under Apache 2, and Falcon 180B is available under open source restriction to emphasize the responsible use of AI. So how we built one of the most powerful LLM model in the world? One of the main criteria, as I mentioned before, is the data. You have to make sure that your data is, is qualified and you have to remove any duplication in your data set. So there are multiple stages that you have to consider. 
as we increase in pre training compute budget, you will go through different stages. So either you increase the size of your uh, model or maybe train it longer. So first we started with the stage one where of course we perform the filtration, extract whatever you want to extract in terms of the text. So we were focusing on text. So we only extract the text from our HTML pages. The language identification. There are more than 170 languages available. We only focus on the English or the Latin European characters. Why is that? As I mentioned before, we did a lot of experimentation to make sure that the multilinguality will not affect or degrade the performance of our large language model. Also, we make sure that we remove any duplication to uh, minimize the memorization for our LLM. And this is the data mixture and the filtration. So you can see here that in terms of web data for Falcon 40B and Falcon 180B, it ranges between 82 to 85%, depends on the uh, model, and it's mainly high quality web data. Then, of course, we have also fraction uh, around 17 to 20 from curated data, and the proportion for that curation data, we did a lot of experimentation to know what's the right proportion for conversational data set, for box technical data, and also for any conversation and box that has been embedded in our data sets. To make sure that we have also multilingual, or to address the multilingual capability in our LLM, we did a lot of experimentation, and also at the end, we decided that we only, we will stick with English, Latin, European languages. One of the main questions that maybe you want to ask or you want to consider, can web data alone with, a, with filtering and deduplication be used to train models outperforming models trained on curating data? as measured by natural language zero shot performance. And we found, what we found is, if you have already a strong baseline for web data set, after 50% of that one, you will see that the performance of your models will start to degrade. So you have to pay attention of the proportion of your curated data, especially if you have very good or massive of high quality web data set. So when you are combining a strong web baseline, we find out that the addition of any curated data, it can affect the performance, especially after 50%. And also the other question is, can limited amounts, five to 10 of code and multilingual data be subtitled in pre-training data added without compromising the English performance of the model? And as you know here, that code, especially for large language model, they have very strong code capabilities. You have BALM code. So what people they are usually do, either they train large language model for specifically for coding, or then they are, they have their foundational model, then of course they will fine tune it by embedding a new code data in it. You can do this with Falcon. Today Falcon is an open source. You can utilize Falcon 40B and build Falcon code on top of our data. But at the beginning, at that time in 2022, especially maybe it's September or from September to November, we were discussing what is the right fraction of the code data that I can implement in Falcon. And as you, we did a lot of experimentation, one of them is to make sure that the zero shot performance, it's not degraded. And we managed and we concluded that, okay, we will include only small fraction of, uh, of code from five to 10% only. 
And of course, we selected the top 30 programming languages from public GitHub and substitute only 5% of the global training data size that we implemented in our training process. That was about the data. What about the architecture of the distributed training? So the Falcon architecture and the recipe for efficient inference and stable is one of the important action or the step that you have to consider while training your LLM. To help scalability, for example, we managed to have, for example, or replace the classical attention by parallel attention inside the transformer block and that it will help the model to be scalable enough. We decided, of course, to have no biases in our linear data. And by removing the biases in the linear layers and also the linear nerves, improve the stability of training our model. We combine 3D parallelism for fine-grained control and also zero for scalability. So we have data parallelism, tensor parallelism, and pipeline also parallelism. We use also optimizer sharding to split the large optimizer state across different or multiple degree of parallel. We reduce the memory footprint and also improve the scalability of our model. So after training Falcon 1B, 3B, 7B, 40B, in each stage, we always conducting different evaluation matrix. And what we found after finalizing the training of Falcon 40B in March 2023, that's already outperforming GBT3 despite being only the fracture of, this, of its size. And this also, as I mentioned at the beginning of my speech, that emphasized that it's not only about the size of the model, it's about the quality of the data, it's about the amount of the data that it has been embedded with one trillion token fraction of the size of GPT-3, we already outperformed GPT-3 model. And in, Fal in Falcon 180 billion evaluation results, you can see here that it's already on the bar uh, of BALM2 large in terms of the performance using one-shot NLB task benchmark as reported uh, in a BALM uh, paper. We find that when averaging the performance across task Falcon 180B already recovers 99.5% of the performance of Palm 2 Large. Also, Falcon 180B delivers downstream performance between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. Falcon 180B performs well on common sense task, where it is also well ahead of GPT 3.5 especially when we are considering also the multiple choice question answering, Falcon 180B performs above GBT 3.5 model. Outside of Palm 2 Large, you can see here that Falcon 180B significantly improve other of the state of art models such as Lama 2 that has been released from uh, Meta. And you can see here that Falcon as well 180B improved significantly over GBT3, BALM, and LAMA2 in a question answering data set. And maybe you can ask your question, you already improve or you have the best open source model back on May 2023 when we released Falcon 40 billion parameter why you continue the journey towards scaling to Falcon 180B. And you can see here that the larger model size also unlock new capabilities in terms of better reasoning and also better mathematical explanation. So here is the example between an answer, the same prompt using Falcon 40B and Falcon 180B, where the, it has more nouns and detailed answer and better reasoning as well using larger models such as Falcon 180B. Also here in terms of multilingual capabilities, 
Falcon 180B, it has much better multilingual capabilities than, than Falcon 40B. What is the most important thing here is the training environment. So large scale distributed training is on a cloud service or your HPC cluster, you have to decide what is the best HPC resources that you have to use enable to train your large language model. And in our case, we consider Amazon SageMaker and my colleague Will will be here today to introduce for you how we use Amazon SageMaker to train one of the best LLM model in the world. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Sam. What a remarkable journey. Um, and I'm so proud and privileged to have been part of it. So it was August 2022 when TII invited us to their office for the first time to talk to us about the vision of building Falcon and the technical requirements they wanted to go through in order to build it. And um, the team, it wasn't really the first time for the team to build an LLM. It was just literally a few months after they finished NOR, which is the largest Arabic LLM at that time. So they had really good idea about what infrastructure setup they wanted to have. And they wanted to present us or presented us with a few challenges. So before I talk about the solution architecture, I want to talk about some of the challenges they gave to us and try to solve um, together. All right, so number one, they wanted to maintain high and consistent T-flops. For the non-technical people in the room, T-flops is basically the metric or the measure for how fast a compute node is able to do mathematical operation. In other words, how fast the training process is. And TII set a very specific compute budget based on some inputs from the scaling laws. So based on the size of the model, number of parameters of the model, the size of the data set, they decided that they want to finish the training of that model in a certain compute days. And in order to do that, we needed to maintain high and consistent T-flops throughout the training process. And because training needs a lot of data, so we wanted to efficiently pre-process petabyte scale of web data. That was really important as well because we needed to have a cluster that can work efficiently and finish in a timely manner so that we can move that data into the training cluster. In the first iteration for experimentation, TII started to use 384 um, GPUs, A100, and they wanted to make sure as, as we scale, as we start training Falcon 180B, they wanted to keep the performance consistent or the implications on the performance is not that um, high. So as we go from 384 to 4,000, that's about 10 times the scale. We wanted to reduce the performance implications on the training uh, process. And of course, things always fail. And when they fail, we needed to have a mechanism to, in place to identify all of the faulty nodes or all of the faulty issues replace them in a timely manner, and resume the training process as fast as we can so that we don't disrupt uh, the compute days of the budget that they specified. And then lastly, and I think this is one of the major core kind of challenges that we've seen or uh, we've gone through, optimizing the storage. So storage lives in the middle all of the communication happens between all of the nodes and the storage. And if this communication is not very optimized and very efficient, it's gonna slow down the whole training process. And we had to make sure that we leverage every single trick that we have in our pocket in order to make it fast and optimized. So this is how, um, based on all of the challenges that you've seen right now, we decided to follow the simple approach. So we decided to use Amazon SageMaker because we wanted to get started very quickly. Um, the team at TII didn't want to really bother about building HPC clusters and configuring all of the underlying instances, configure the com communication and configuration, 
between these instances. So they decided to use Amazon SageMaker for that. And then for the container itself, they rebuilt that container from the ground up with custom setup and custom configuration. So distributed training libraries was completely RAM built from scratch by them. They built all of the base code for the training um, and all of the communication with the storage, which is S3 in that case. So pulling the data down, streaming the data down from S3, and then when we save the model state, which we call checkpointing, upload the data in a timely manner. And then on the right hand side, you see the data preparation cluster. So we used C5 18x large instances. We used about 257 of these instances. And for the training, we used P4D instance that contains about um, eight, A100 NVIDIA GPUs. And then on top of StageMaker API, they built a custom agent that is able to orchestrate all of the different processes in order to make that training happen. So pull the container out from ECR repository, start the training process, monitor that training, see if there's any faulty nodes, resume that training if needed from the last ch healthy checkpoint. Now, I wanna zoom a little bit into the training cluster and talk a bit more about that one. So for the Falcon training, we built a SageMaker cluster of more than 500 P4D24X large instances. Each one of these instances is equipped with eight A100 NVIDIA GPU chip. And in having eight GPU chips inside a single instance gave us some throughput advantage. And that's because the A100 GPU chip um, interconnects, uh, has NV switch interconnect that is able to communicate with every single other GPU within the same instance at a speed of 600 gigabyte per second. We also had the EFA um, or elastic fabric adapter that helped all of these instances to communicate with each other and with other services outside through the network interface at about 400 gigabits per second. So um, we were able to download efficiently download the data from S3 and upload the data um, to S3 at, at that speed, which is really good. However, um, Again, S3 or communication with the storage is one of the most complicated part or one of the most complicated challenge here because if we don't get it right, it's gonna be problematic. So Amazon S3 automatically scales to high request rates. Um, so if the application is aggregating about 3,500 put transaction per second or 5,500 get or download transaction per second, you don't need to do anything and that is per prefix. And the awesome thing about um, S3 is that you can create unlimited number of prefixes within the same bucket, meaning that you can scale and optimize the read and write performance as much as you can, and that's exactly what we've done. So now I wanna talk about some of the best practices we found training Falcon and overcoming some of these challenges. So when we um, started training, uh, the training job, we made sure that all of the training nodes in the cluster are started in the same availability zone. And that's because we wanted to have very close proximity between all of the nodes in that cluster, right? We even collaborated with the SageMaker service team in order to, within the same availability zone, place some of these nodes behind the same backbone or the same spine and that helped increase the performance by about 3%. You might look at 3% and say that's a small number, but it's actually saved a couple of days of training, which is quite expensive if you scale it to 500 P4D instances. So the second um, uh, challenge here, if you remember data processing, we use what we call parallel share nothing architecture, meaning that um, all of, the, all of the data pre-processing tasks that Dr. Sam was talking about, like deduplication, filtering, we had a classifier for profanity and, and um, different words. All of that happens independently in, inside the cluster nodes. So anything that can happen with, that avoid, with avoiding the communication between the nodes, 
we did that separately in um, the C5 instances. <coughs> and then ended up having or using 18,000 virtual CPU and about 37 um, terabytes of memory. That produced about 11 terabyte of very, very clean data mapping to about 5 trillion tokens. And then we had a lot of, um, quite a few silent GPU failure. We had some network timeout we had some other failures coming from different parts of that cluster. So initially, we started to set up CloudWatch to look at GPU utilization, and that ended up not picking all of the issues. So we used triple dimensions. We used GPU utilization, training job logs, and um, looking at the throughput coming out of the network interfaces. All three combined gave us a signal whether or not something is happening, the training is continuing or not. Um, because in some instances we'll see um, the utilization for the GPU quite high, but nothing is happening. It's also worthy to note that SageMaker job um, um, takes the maximum time for the job is about 28 days. So, um, and that's what the custom agent that TII built was uh, taking care of. So it was chaining jobs together and resuming from the last checkpoint using a Lambda function. And then um, lastly, we had to scale and partition Amazon S3 bucket to prepare for bursting workloads. So that was basically doing one of the heaviest tasks when you train a model, which is saving the model state and doing the checkpointing and uploading that checkpoint to the storage, which is S3 in that case. For Falcon 180B, we had about four terabyte checkpoints and we were saving a checkpoint every two hours. So you can imagine the amount of traffic that was going through all of the network interfaces to the S3 bucket. Thankfully, we've built um, all of these best practices and more into the AWS Common Runtime. So uh, the CRT is basically a set of native tools and libraries underpinning many of the AWS um, SDKs. Um, it also includes native S3 client um, that implements automatic request parallelization, request timeout, retries, and connection reuse. This is really important because it helps avoiding over, um, overloading the ne network interfaces. So for example, if we have a very large object like that checkpoint that we need to resume from, um, and we download this using the CRT client, uh, CRT client is going to automatically download multiple byte ranges of that file in parallel, which increases the throughput and reduces uh, the, um, or, or fully saturate the network interfaces so that you can make the most out of it. I'm also super excited that we announced, um, just literally a couple of days ago, we announced um, Amazon S3 connector for PyTorch which is also helping in optimizing a lot of these um, tasks that happens if you have a PyTorch container. So um, the checkpointing part of the training job um, now is gonna happen directly to S3 instead of saving it into the internal storage and then upload it to S3. That saves about up to 40% um, or makes it about up to 40% faster when you checkpoint. Now that we covered the architecture that underpins Falcon, it's really important to understand um, how TII evaluated the performance and accuracy of the model. So model evaluation is really important part of any machine learning model training lifecycle. And apart from running all of the offline evaluation that Dr. Sam presented, we also did human evaluation uh, to understand how good the model is. So this is really important because we needed to um, just assess uh, not just the technological part of the model, but how um, e ethically sound the model is. So we built a very simple architecture here and we leverage uh, Slack channels. So what was happening is we ha hosted the model um, behind uh, SageMaker endpoints and every day we would send um, requests to the model, generate responses, send it to the Slack channel and have a few people from TII and AWS team as well to look at some of these answers and evaluate them. Um, so we would rate them from one to five. 
and also say whether or not it's um, appropriate or fabricated. So that was really important part of the evaluation process. So this summarizes um, the collaboration that happened between TII and AWS to train Falcon. Now to truly appreciate the power and potential of Falcon, let's see it in action. Um, I'd like to invite my colleague, Ben, um, to demonstrate some of the capabilities of the model through some prompting strategies and also show you how Falcon um, can be a gateway to AI possibilities. Thank you. Thanks, Will. Uh, so you might be asking yourself, how can we get this really great capability into your solutions, solve your business problems, your mission problems, uh, and customize Falcon uh, to solve your tasks? Uh, so in this next section, we're going to be talking about how to do prompt engineering for Falcon. Uh, this is specific to optimizing the output of Falcon uh, to solve those tasks for your mission or your organization or your corporation uh, to be able to, to solve those really complex language problems. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the structure of the optimal design for a prompt. Uh, it really starts with setting the stage. Uh, this is setting the environment. Uh, what type of question is going to be asked? What is the high level task uh, that's going to be performed? Um, what is the constraints, the, the guardrails, uh, those different elements uh, all pertain to setting the stage uh, so that the Falcon could mold the response uh, based on what you wanted to do. From there, uh, there's a series of tags. Uh, those tags really allow you to do interactions uh, and those sorts of things under the covers. And then there's the instructions and the input data uh, to be able to really drive the results that you want out of the Falcon model. If we look at that a little bit closer, uh, the order of these tags are important, or the, the structure of the prompt itself is important to really get the best performance out of Falcon 1ADB. Uh, it starts with the task definition. I want Falcon to have a conversation. I want to answer a question. I want to summarize information. I want to generate a narrative. All those are high-level tasks that should be defined up front uh, in this structure to get the best performance. From there, you can have a set of personas. These are essentially roles uh, of the interaction. You could have one role saying, Falcon, generate content uh, and pretend you're a, a teacher, a programmer, an expert in this domain. Uh, so it could be a single role. Or if it's a conversation, you could have multiple roles or personas that are defined. And those show up in the various tags that we're going to see later on in a moment. The context comes after those personas. Uh, and that really helps scope uh, the results for Falcon. So do you want uh, to use only the information provided later on in the prompt? Do you want it to output JSON? How do you want uh, the interaction to be scoped uh, within that context of the request? And then finally, after the context is the guardrails. And these are really important to be able to have Falcon uh, and other large language models, but in this case, Falcon, uh, respond uh, the way you want it to respond. So, do you want it to say, I don't know, if it doesn't have the information? Um, do you want to um, have it think step by step and show a little bit of that reasoning uh, or show that reasoning power under the covers? Uh, we're going to show some examples of these advanced prompting techniques uh, on the coming slides. Uh, but this really helps um, set the stage uh, to be able to, to have Falcon respond how you want it to and get the really powerful results that, um, that you're going to see. So, so from there, um, one uh, question that you might be asking is, language is naturally ambiguous. If I ask it to summarize an article, uh, uh, here we have an article uh, with Werner Vogel and two uh, uh, distinguished scientists from Amazon. And if we ask um, a large language model, if we ask Falcon to summarize this article, it's an ambiguous task. Uh, so um, you might uh, get various types of responses back depending on um, what, what type, the way you ask to summarize that information. One advanced prompting technique that Falcon supports is the directional stimulus. What this is, is it's auxiliary information to your prompt information that guides that, that answer so it clears up that ambi amb ambiguity. Uh, so in this case, we're providing a reference and a hint. And rather than having um, Falcon uh, summarize the information based on uh, different year ranges, five to six years, uh, different roles, those sorts of things, we could say these are important elements when you're summarizing. So rather than 
iterating over and over again, trying to refine that prompt and ask very, very specific questions, we could use this advanced prompting technique called uh, directional stimulus uh, to be able to say, I want to really focus on Werner Vogel, generative AI, scientists in 30 years. And what we see is Falcon will generate uh, two to three sentences, because that's what we asked for in the task, uh, based on that direction. So very, very um, powerful advanced um, prompting techniques to be able to still have that prompt more generic, but guide through that ambiguity, saying focus on these things when you're doing that summary. Another advanced uh, technique is being able to do react, reasoning and action. Uh, so here, what we're doing is um, integrating with different APIs, uh, different tools. So large language models, uh, you might be asking yourself with Falcon, how can I bring that into my solution? How can I start customizing both on that task, but bring in external data sources? Uh, in this case, we're bringing in a data source for news and weather. Uh, and what we're saying is, uh, we're saying Falcon, uh, try to answer the question, but if you can't answer the question, use these data sources, use these tools to help get more information that you might need. Uh, so you might be seeing how that could relate to integrating with your enterprise tools or other tools you might have in your organization uh, to be able to bring data in. Uh, then we're t through the prompts, we're saying uh, you're a helpful assistant in the high-level task. Uh, only answer based on what you know or use these tools. Uh, those are setting up the various uh, context and guardrails. Uh, and then do these structure, uh, perform these uh, actions. Um, Start with a thought, action, action, input, and observation, and iterate over that until you can answer the question. And here we see asking the question, being able to ask the weather today in Stockholm. And if we take a look at the results of what Falcon does, it's doing that thought process. First, it realizes, um, I don't have this information. What tool should I use? And, and we're providing multiple tools. We're not just saying use weather if, if you don't have the answer. We're saying use these set of tools and determine the right tool to use. And here we see it determining weather uh, and also what city is being specified, Stockholm. Uh, so that's the thought. I, I need to figure out what tool to use because I don't know this information. That's the action. Uh, I need to perform weather and the action input is Stockholm. From there, uh, we can see an observation of uh, now I know the weather in Stockholm, uh, and then ultimately the answer of the weather is two degrees Celsius. So that's showing um, how multiple tools could be brought in. Another advanced techni technique in, in prompt engineering that Falcon supports, uh, and being able to determine that tool to integrate into your system. From there, uh, you might be asking, how can I actually do function calls? Uh, how can I call a weather service that might be an API? Or um, you know, maybe I want to do other types of functions and integrations calling APIs or functions of code or uh, other integrations there. So that kind of leads to function calling. Uh, so with function calling, here we have a function definition in a JSON form saying, uh, we have a weather function and it takes these inputs. It takes the country, it takes the city, it takes the date uh, that you want the, the weather forecast for. Uh, and here what we're doing is we're asking Falcon um, a question. We're not actually asking the Falcon to fill in a function parameter. Uh, we're using natural language and saying we want this information, uh, want this information uh, to be able to um, get the weather information. And what we're doing is we're saying, uh, pretend like it's tomorrow, uh, today is uh, November 28th, uh, 2023. Uh, and I'm driving from um, uh, LA to Las Vegas, and what's the weather in two days uh, um, uh, from there, or from today? So from here, what we see is uh, being able uh, to get the weather, um, get uh, the country derived uh, from the city, uh, and we're also having, providing information about the date. Uh, we're saying today is this date, and in two days, uh, what is the date? And from here, uh, we're able to um, generate the function calls to be able to call the get weather service. So those are a small sample of the advanced uh, prompting techniques. Uh, there's many, many others as well. Uh, we could spend a session on uh, optimizing um, you know, how to get the best value. Uh, but those are some of the techniques to be able to uh, see the power of Falcon and do uh, things like 
reasoning, uh, calling functions, determining tools. Uh, and the, the key thing there is that structure of the prompt. Uh, the structure of the prompt is, is uh, oftentimes specific to an LLM. Uh, and structuring the prompt that specific way will help you get the right, um, uh, get uh, optimal results out of Falcon. So from there, how can you get started in your AWS environment? Uh, we have uh, Falcon LLMs through Jumpstart. Uh, it's the easy, easy way to integrate into uh, your AWS environment. Uh, it uh, provides single click integration through SageMaker Studio. So here uh, we have SageMaker Studio, which is an integrated environment to do your end-to-end -end ML uh, development. Uh, and, and here we can see through that in, uh, integrated environment, we see Falcon 80, 180B, uh, 180B, Falcon 40B, 7B, uh, and the different models. So from here, you could do through a uh, single click deployment, you could do fine tuning, um, but not only that, you could also do the, uh, the same sort of uh, getting access to those open LLM models uh, through Jumpstart through the uh, AWS admin console. You could integrate into the model, uh, model cards and the, um, see the model cards in Hugging Face. Uh, you could jump into the code itself uh, and see coding samples to integrate it into your code uh, and get um, snippets of code to integrate into your, your logic and your code repositories, uh, all through things like three lines of code to deploy Falcon. So in this case, we're deploying Falcon 7B, um, but it's as easy as changing that string to deploy the other models out um, to be able to, to integrate um, uh, top performing open LLM in your application. Once it's deployed, uh, you could integrate it through um, our SDK uh, to call Falcon through the SageMaker endpoint. Uh, and just to give a, a small perspective of what's under the covers here, uh, is when you deploy to the SageMaker endpoint, uh, you don't have to worry about managing everything on, on the left-hand side. Uh, you define that in a, in a policy, in a declarative statement saying, here's the infrastructure I want to deploy Falcon onto. And we manage the, uh, the auto scaling and all that underfage heavy lifting uh, behind a managed secure endpoint. So from there, um, uh, you can see the different elements of deploying Falcon out. Uh, I want to invite back on stage um, Will and, and Dr. Epstein, uh so that we could uh, uh, highlight some key takeaways. Hello, so we are welcome uh, here uh, again back with you. And one of the main thing and the one of the main takeaway today will not be able to be here without the collective effort between different team members and different players from the people who already built Falcon to the people who helped us in deploying Falcon. So in order for you to build one of the top ranked LLM model or any advanced AI model, Openness, collaboration is the key. Thank you. I think the second most, most important uh, key takeaway is um, everybody thinks that if you have a bigger model, that means better model in terms of number of parameters. Um, yes, number of parameters can help capturing the language nuances. However, if you see Falcon, that's one of the biggest evidence that number of parameters is, doesn't mean that the model is going to be better if you compare it to something that is double or triple the number of parameters. So it all depends on the data. It all depends on the architecture of the, um, of the model. And I see in the future that the model size are gonna get smaller and smaller and it's gonna get better as well. So that's where we should spend our efforts on. Thank you. Um, and. Um with all this, you can integrate Falcon into your applications today very, very easily. You can do it through code, you can do it through wizards, you can single click, uh, and it's a, uh, all the, the different Falcon models, uh, the 7B, the 40B, the 180B, um, you can start doing prompt engineering very easily through the integration in AWS. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for being with us today. Thank you.